Hello everyone, I am Claire Doi Doi. Today we are going to have our mathematics in the modern world subject. Here we are going to talk about Polya's four steps in problem solving. Before we go through the topic, I have here the list of objectives. The students are expected to A. Understand Polya's four steps in problem solving. B. Use a problem-solving model that incorporates understanding the problem, making a plan, carrying out the plan, and evaluating the solution for reasonableness. And C. Select or develop an appropriate problem-solving strategy from a variety of different types, including drawing a picture, looking for a pattern, systematic guessing and checking, making a table, working a simpler problem, or working backwards to solve a problem among others. This four steps in problem solving made by Polya was developed in 1945. So, who is George Polya? Well, George Polya lived from 1887 to 1985. According to him, Mathematical problem solving is finding a way around a difficulty, around an a obstacle, and finding a solution to a problem that is unknown. He was a Hungarian mathematician and a mathematics professor and considered as the father of problem solving in mathematics education because of his many contributions in the subject. So, to mention a few of his contributions, these are the probability theory, number theory, the theory of functions, the calculus of variations, and of course, this Polya's four steps in problem solving. In these steps of problem solving, it includes understanding the problem, devising a plan, carry out the plan, and checking the answer. So, in understanding the problem, step one, sometimes the problem lies in understanding the problem. If you are unclear as to what needs to be solved, then you are probably going to get the wrong results. In order to show an understanding the problem, you, of course, need to read the problem thoroughly. You need to read it carefully so that you would be able to understand it. You can adapt the message and in addition to understand the problem, we need to thoroughly look for the information given. To make it easier, we can ask why is it like this? What's the problem? Or what are the problem? What's the unknown? If you will, you will only have to look for one unknown and then um, what are the data given what are the conditions are the conditions given sufficient enough to determine the unknown and then aside from that you can also visualize information and organize and connect this information so that you could think of a suitable solutions to the given problem so after understanding the problem, we need to devise a plan, which is the step two. When, when you devise a plan or translate, as what others call it, you come up with a way to solve the problem. How are you going to solve the problem? So, there are ways that you can go about solving a problem, like setting up an equation, drawing a diagram, or making a chart. Then... You could also make a systematic list of the given so that you can spot the important data right away. You could also look for a pattern or revise the problem by simplifying the problem and solving each part of the problem. So next, if you already have your device plan, we can proceed to our step 3, the carrying out the plan. So how, so how are we going to carry out this plan? Well, we can carry out this plan by using mathematical knowledge, skills, and logical thinking. If you notice, 
this part is the solution part in the problem solving process. For our next or the last step would be the checking of the answer. So, in some references, they didn't put it as check the answer, but rather they put it as looking, looking back. So, in our life, you may be familiar with the expression, don't look back. But, in here, in problem solving, it is good to look back or check the answer. So, what are you going to do here is to check to see if you are using all your informations, all your um, appropriate solutions to find the answers accordingly. And if the answers make sense because the answers will, will, will uh, give you points. So, aside from that, make sure that in writing your final answers, you will write it with the correct labeling that's important okay so to further understand on how do we use polyas four step in problem solving let's have an example so look at this math problem okay i'll be reading this one in a one hectare farm the number of ducks and goats totals 21 if there are 60 animal legs all together how many goats are there? Okay, so in solving the problem, we'll be applying the four steps in problem solving made by Polya. Okay, so step one, understand the problem. So you can see in the problem statement, there are two animals, ducks and goats. Now, if these two added together, it would result to 21. If there are 60 animal legs all together. How many goats are there? So, if you noticed, our unknown is the number of goats. Okay, so to put it in a simple and understandable way, we can write it in a way like this. In here, I made a list of the given so that uh, I can, or you can see the important data. So given the total number of ducks and goats equals 21, the total number of animal legs equals 60, and our unknown, the number of goats. As you can see, we already had the breakdown of the data, the important data. So this time we are going to proceed to our step 2, which is to devise a plan. So based on our given problem, we have identified two variables, the ducks and goats. So since we have two variables, we'll be using letters from the alphabet to represent each variable. So here, we'll be using our X and Y since these are the most common letters used to represent variables in mathematics. Okay, so let our X be the number of ducks consist of two legs let our y be the number of goats consist of four legs aside from that in our given it was listed there that the total number of goats and ducks when added together will be equal to 21 however the number of goats are unknown so let us make an equation for the total number of ducks and goats since the number of ducks is represented by x and the number of goats are represented by y, then we can make it in a way like this. x plus y equals 21. So, this equation would be our first equation. And if you notice, x and y are still unknown. They don't have a um, specific value. Okay, so next is to find the um, equation for the total number of animal legs. So, based on our given problem, there are 60 animal legs, right? 60. So, in our equation, we will be multiplying the number of legs, number of legs in each animal to the corresponding symbol representation. So, 2 legs times 2x would give you 2x. 
4 legs times 4y will give you 4y. So, join together, it would be 2x plus 4y equals 60. So, this would be our equation 2. So moving on to our step 3, carrying out the plan. We'll now be having our solution part here. Okay, so if you can still remember, we had our first equation, which is x plus y equals 21. This is the equation for the total number of goats and ducks that when you add it together, it will give you 21. Next, we'll be applying this formula, this equation, to our next equation. However, in the next equation, which is 2x plus 4y equals 60, we can simply add it up that way because this equation has two variables. So, it needs the other variable to have a specific value. So, what are we going to do is from our second equation, we need to look first for the value of x. Well, you could also look for the value of y, but I prefer to look for the value of x. Okay, so how are we going to do that? Since we already had our first equation, this one, um, we're going to make some changes by transposing variables from this equation. So since we already had x plus y equals 21, I'll be using to transpose positive y to the other side because for me, this is more convenient. Okay, so we'll transpose positive y to the other side. So it will give you x equals 21 minus y or negative y since transpose it. So equation 3 will be this one. Remember this equation because we will be using it later. Okay, so here in this section, we need to solve for y, the number of goats, using the obtained value of x. Equation 3 will be used to substitute in equation 2. So since this is the value of x, we'll substitute it to x as well. So it happened to be 2 times 21 minus y plus 4y equals 60. So if you observe, we already have one variable, right? The y variable is still unknown or doesn't have a specific value. So since we already substituted our x by its corresponding um, value. Next thing that we are going to do is to determine the value of y. We have to distribute first this one to this. Okay, so it would be like 2 times 21, it would be equal to 42. 2 times negative y would be equal to negative 2y. So the equation would be 42 minus 2y plus 4y equals 60. Now, if you take a look into it, you can say that you'll be able to make a computation. However, you are wrong because you cannot compute it that way. Just like um, what we did in the previous steps, we need to make changes also. We need to make a transpositions of numbers, not variables because here, this two is already joined together. What we're going to transpose are the numbers so, th so that this two would be together. So since we already had this together, we can compute for its value. Negative 2y plus 4y would give you positive 2y. And since um, 60 and 42 are not in the same place, we will transpose 42 to the other side. Okay, so it will give you 60 minus 42. So now, if you can see, the equation is 2y equals 60 minus 42. Since we will have the breakdown of solutions in the problem, our um, goal now is to find the value of 
y. So to find the value of y, we should eliminate 2 in so that um, variable y will be left. Okay, so 2y divided by 2 cancel 2. So variable y is the only thing left in, in this side. Then 18 divided by 2 will give you 9. So therefore, there are 9 goats in a 1 hectare farm. So you can see we can stop here since we already find the answers the answer to our unknown, the number of goats. But for convenience in checking our answer later, we'll try to find the answer or the value of x as well, the number of ducks. Okay, so to find the value of x, we'll be using our third equation. Remember, this is our third equation. x equals 21 minus y. Since we already have the value of y, which is 9, we can use it to substitute the value of y to this. Okay, so it would be x equals 21 minus 9. Then x, 21 minus 9 will give you 12. So, therefore, there are 12 ducks in a 1 hectare farm. So, for the final point, let's check the answers. Let's check first the total number of ducks and goats. Okay, so this is, this is our first equation. X for the number of ducks and Y for the number of goats. Okay, so substitute it by their value. 12 plus 9 equals 21. 12 plus 9 will give you 21 and also which is which also equates to this so we need to say this is correct okay so next is the total number of animal legs so remember this is our equation 2 just like what we did here substitute the x and y variables by its corresponding value so 2 times 12 plus 4 times 9 equals 60 so 2 times 12 will give you 24 4 times 9 will give you 36 equals 60 when you add 24 and 36 together it will give you 60 and then this is 60 also so you could see it is also correct so, therefore, the solutions are correct since the answers satisfy the given equation. That's it. I hope that you've learned something from this topic. Thank you for listening. God bless.